at the time, I wanted to be a mouseketeer. Okay. I wanted to be Talk. on a Mickey Mouse Club. I did. I was like, now it's time Brittany, to say goodbye. Justin. Yeah. I was like, that's me. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Post in Black, where we celebrate black excellence behind the lens. I'm your host, David Hunter Jr. We want to thank the Dolby Institute for sponsoring this season of Post in Black. And thank you to our supporting sponsor, Avid, for your support. Without you, this would not be possible. Today, we have an incredible episode. We have editor and video content creator, Lyric Ramsey, in the building. How you doing? How you doing? How are you? I'm doing great. I was, I thought I was dressed up pretty nice, but you came in crushing. Listen, you have some very important people come by here. <laughs> so I just wanted to fit in. You know, I was nah. like, let me dress. Emphasis on fit. Come and your on. platform is just one of a kind. Yeah. And so I just wanted to honor it because I'm honored to actually be here. Like yeah. I feel like, oh shit, like I stepped into <laughs> like another level. So Yeah, no, you know. we we've been uh we've been watching from afar. I we've had, like that. we've had people even DM us on the low yeah. and they're like, hey, you know, if you're looking for anybody to edit, we're like, that's on the list. And so our, our social media uh Appreciate they you. reached out. And then we got the, on the email chain, yeah. had to get you in the building. So yeah. it's, a, it's an honor. So I'm honored. I'm honored to be here. For yeah. Sure. We're going to dive in. Obviously, we're going to talk a little bit more about, about life, editing, yeah. post, all that. But just to start off, an icebreaker. Is that good? I love an icebreaker. Yeah. Because people, people have this like expectation of me when they look at me. Okay. Just because I'm like, you know, I'm a fashion girly. Yeah. Like I like to look good. And I think how I look is like a representation of just like my artistry. But I'm quite... Like awkward, and like I go through, you know what I'm saying? Like people, like I'm an introverted, extroverted person. So yeah, I would love an icebreaker. Okay, so I can, okay. I can, so you know, relax a little bit. You know, we we in 2024. The Olympics is here. Next Excited. stop up for the Olympics is Paris. Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Yeah, Paris yes, here, Paris, now, but then yeah. it's gonna be LA in four years. Yes. So if you had an opportunity to participate in the Olympics, mm, what event would you participate in, and why? Oh, I'm gonna do something like. Okay, because most people want to do all the glamorous ones, yeah. you know, track and field, mm -hmm. gymnastic. I like equestrian. Okay. <laughs> I want something I can win in. <laughs> I'm probably going to do like, you know, uh, you know, I like I like a little horseback riding, yeah. archery, yeah, ski shooting. What is What else do they got? Come on. Um, is bowling a, a Olympic sport? I don't know if it is yet. It's but... gonna be some off the wall. It's yeah. not gonna be. It's not gonna be like the typical thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. What else do they do in the Olympics? It's been a long time since I actually. They like, do that. The guys that um, I forget what it's called, but they have the sword fighting. Fencing, you know what I mean? Fencing. Come on. Ping pong. Ping pong. What? That right there. Ping that sport is incredible. Might, ping pong actually might be the one. They, that's really hard. Beach volleyball. Beach. I do Just watch that. Kinda, beach, volleyball. Kinda, beach volleyball. Beach I want to do the synchronized diving. Okay. That'd be fun. But I need okay. a partner because it's like that telekinesis, you know, right you there. Have where you to, just, it's a twin thing. They actually like penalize you if you don't walk to the platform at the same time. Oh, I everything thought you could has just, to I be thought it was insane. just diving, getting the water. And then, you know, I'm watching, you watch the Olympics. I do. And you judging now like you the professional. Yeah. You know, you're like, like that, you've been judging, like you've been watching your whole life. That splash was too much. Yeah, too Why, much water. That splash was too much. What's yeah. going on? Also, like uh, wrestling. Okay. I watch all the weird stuff that's like on at midnight. <laughs> yes. It's like the stuff at the like not prime time. Yeah. That's the my my jam in the Olympics. I'm with it. I'm like on NBC, like, you know, you and like, you yeah. know, the other one, CNBC. The judo. When they yeah, the judo watching that. I think sumo. Yeah. All that's great. All I'm with great. it. We watch party. Come on. Please, let's do it. Look. It's here. So I, I'm I'm with it. You know, yeah. you talked about that. But can you first off, that was the icebreaker. That was great. But can you a little bit talk about the, you know, the fashion? Because we have to recognize that, yeah. you know, wh what inspired you? That's an icebreaker. What inspired you to get in the fashion? Have you always been, you know, yeah. the kind of person that you I, are? I have. I'm from L.A. Yeah. Born and raised. All right. What, what, what part? I grew up in Carson. Yeah. Right. And so my family... My father, especially, mm -hmm. was a very well-dressed man. Yeah. And I remember how he would put on a three-piece suit. This is actually this watch is my mother's. Some of his, some of these pins are my yeah. father's. Like he would put on a three-piece suit every day. Mm -hmm. He smelled good. He had nice Stacey Adams. Yeah. You know, some type yeah. of crocodile shoe on. <laughs> and I just would look at him and I'd be like, okay. And he had this like air about himself, like how he looked. 
made people, especially from, he was from the Deep South, yeah. you know, moving to California and during a time where, you know, it was segregated. Mm -hmm. So when he moved to Compton, it was mostly white. So like looking apart gave him a sense of, I belong here, right? right? And that's something that he passed on and he mostly would be like, dress for the job you want. So that's yeah. kind of where that kind of stuck in my mind, right? And then I grew up with older brothers and they were children of the 80s and 90s. So they had mm -hmm. flat tops and gold earrings in their ears yeah. and like black African medallions. Yeah. I was like, this is so clean. I'd be like, I'd just be so excited growing up. <laughs> I wanted to wear all their clothes. And so it just kind of like started there, just, yeah. you know, finding my personality in fashion, mm -hmm. like in the clothes that I wear, how do they represent me? Because sometimes I may not get to speak, but this speaks for me in a it lot does. of ways, you know, like right. people have a sense of, they, you know, people can get a sense of like, oh, who, who am I a little bit just from mm -hmm. my aesthetic? Today, I'm giving you a little business equestrian, <laughs> <laughs> you know, summer vibes. Yeah. yeah. No, it's fire and it's yeah. perfect. Thank and that, you. And, that, and I love it. We love, we love the natives. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we, we've it's been in LA a long. No, you know, it's not many. I've we been know. in LA a long time. And I have a lot of friends from here, but uh, it's definitely from? we were born in DC. Okay, Washington, I went to I went to Howard. So yeah, I lived yeah, in DC we for went a to while. Hampton. Yeah, you know, our, our, our my mom went to Howard, okay. so it's love. Yeah, yeah, all that real issue. I never really yeah. subscribed to all of that. Being an LA girl, I thought I was too cool for Howard anyway. To be, I, See, I, I don't want to upset any people from <laughs> Howard out you there. You went but there. <laughs> I did go there, but like you know, it's. I'll say this because I love. I grew up watching all the things most yeah. people of my generation did, right? I grew up watching the Cosby show in yeah, yeah. a different world. Classic. I had swallowed the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Indoctrinated. Yeah. And again, like my father is, uh, he was a, you know, Mason mm -hmm. and he did the Kappa thing. So like, I was like, yay. Was yeah. And then I got there and I was just like, okay, this is different than... The TV show. Yeah, what they see, yeah. And so it, for me, I, I always say this, like when people really want my experience of that, like I never really felt like I fit in. Mm -hmm. Fit in. It no, wasn't until mean. like I, I was like an outsider. Yeah. I did feel like an outsider while I was there um, because it was very like clicky mm -hmm. in my experience. I hope it's changed. No, it, it can be like that. Yeah. I mean, we that's something that we could talk about the HBCU culture. It's like culture. we love it. But there's also in within it, there's a little, you yeah, know, there's things that you're privy to. Yeah, but now that I'm out of it, to. I love it. Yeah. Oh, no, for it. sure. Yeah. Hate you. <laughs> yeah, there, there it I is. No, I do. I love the camaraderie yeah. of alumni ship. Like, yeah. I, that is, you know. And I, especially here on the West Coast. It's, it's a like, lot of us. There's a lot of us. And, you know, we after you people, like you say, you get past the whole yeah. HU, Hampton, all. It's like, okay, HBCU, North State, together, you want yeah. the Clark, you want there, yeah. and especially in the industry too. Yeah. Sometimes that's just good to have. It doesn't even matter what school you went to. Right. It's like we let's look we out for each other. other. Yeah, Absolutely. for sure. I so, do love that. No, so so talk about this. Like obviously, you, you're growing up, you're LA native, mm -hmm. and then you went to Howard. Mm -hmm. Did you like you knew about Howard? You were like, I'm going to yeah. go here. Did you know you were going to work in TV and film when yeah. you went to Howard too? Absolutely, okay. I did. I was one of those kids that. I loved television and film. I mean, like, I my mother was into westerns. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, yeah. so we would sit. I would come home from school, mm -hmm. have ton of homework. Okay, and sit in front of like the big box, the big TV box, and yeah. she would put on some John Wayne. Or um, Clint Eastwood, right. Unforgiven, you know, something like that. And I would watch doing my homework and just like be obsessed. Yeah. And just like the things that she watched, I kind of just loved. Mm -hmm. So you're talking the Murder She Wrote, the Dirty Harry's, Columbo. Yeah. Like, you know, and then my brothers watched. Everything from, I mean, everything under the sun from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to yeah. He-Man to like everything. And then my dad was into the Blacks, the Black Chef. Mm. And yeah. uh, um, what's she the had a other wide guy? range of just A wide range of Mar um, Mario Van Peoples, the Black, oh. Black Moan. Or, it was another I know one. What you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, like yeah. he yeah. was watching the Pam Greers. Right. So I just was like, I want to do this. I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be an artist. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what yet, 
I was like, I'm either going to be, at the time, I wanted to be a mouseketeer. Okay. I wanted to be Talk. on a Mickey Mouse Club. I did. I was like, now it's time Brittany, to say goodbye. Justin. Yeah. I was like, that's me. <laughs> so I was trying to convince my mom to like, ship me to Florida. Put me in a little boot camp. I want to be in TV. Be I in. wanted to be on the television. Yeah. And they were like, absolutely not. And I was one of those kids that I was very ambitious. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in LA and I just knew I had to make my own opportunities here. Yeah. You know, going to public school and, yeah. you know, my parents did really well, but still just they wanted me to become a lawyer, a doctor, very I much that. You. And I was like, I want to be an artist. And they were like, we're only going to pay if you become a lawyer and a doctor. So I knew I had to figure this out on my own. And so I went to Howard for television production. That's fine. I was just like, all right, well, OK, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to go to school for it. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to study it. Mm -hmm. And then, Yeah. Yeah. So so you you're at Howard and and obviously they have a wide range of people that have come through there, people that are teaching there that may not even be on TV but that are just well versed in knowledge and information. What was the trigger that maybe like hooked you to even post? What introduced you to post production? What introduced was me it, to post? Was it, it at Howard or was it It after? was not. Okay. It was so. not like my the 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 concentration at Howard was broad. Yeah. The the feeling was know who you are which I value right. hindsight wasn't at the time. I wasn't really, wasn't really clear on that. Yeah. But now I know the importance of understanding who I am mm -hmm. and making things black. Come on. Make something black. Tell your story. Yeah. Right. And once I left there, I really understood that yeah. because it's so easy to kind of just forget that just to get, an opportunity. Yeah. And I will say that I, I think how I kind of got into the business is a little bit of fate, a mm -hmm. little bit of opportunity, a little bit of like- Because you know, your story being, is unique. And you know, yes. you know, even hearing about it a little bit, you can obviously, yeah. those that don't know, you can talk about even that like yeah. Crenshaw and meeting, just yeah. walking up to somebody being- I have never had a job that wasn't in television. Yeah. Um, I and I'm. I feel like that's a unique. It is a unique story. That's unique. Not a lot of people. Yeah. You know. Even still, we we hustling and yeah. we do different things on the side. But you always being in TV. Yeah. You know. Someone says. Uh, I don't know if you follow astrology, but uh, I I will. If the people out there who do follow astrology, yeah. I have Jupiter in my second house. Come on. So that means that uh, just opportunity and luck is kind of. It's been shining there. over me. I, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I definitely work hard, but how my, how I got into the business, I got off a plane mm -hmm. at LAX after spending four years. I just graduated. I was just fresh off the plane, and uh, I needed to get home. my hair done because I had been in DC for four years, <laughs> and I'm an LA girl with long hair. Down. I need to get my hair done, so I'm on Crenshaw back home at my hair salon, and they are filming a TV show. It's camera crews all over the place. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Right. And this was at the peak. I didn't know what was happening here because yeah. I had been gone for four years. But yeah. this was like at the barbershop movie must have just mm -hmm. come out. So now it's the beauty, the beauty salon movies about Every, to come out. All these so there is a TV crew shooting this very popular uh barbershop salon called the Millennium mm -hmm. on Crenshaw Boulevard. It's painted in like purple and gold, mm -hmm. like the Lakers. And I'm in there and I see all these white people. And I'm just like, what are y'all doing? They're like, we're shooting a reality show. I'm like, I need a job. Yeah. I just got out of school. I was like, I need a job. They're like, yeah, that doesn't work like that. I'm like, why not? Like, I'll work for free. I never forget this. I was like, I'll work for free. Yeah. And they were like, well, it's LA, so we can't hire you for free. But, you know, we like your energy. You're young. You're hungry. You just went to school. So they hired me on the spot as a PA. Yeah. I started, you know, it was just For a sure. set PA. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much how I kind of got my foot in the door. Insane. And I mean, I just grinded from there. Yeah. Insane. Know? Insane. But that's kind of how that's the that's the you, origin story. <laughs> you know, you know it's funny. We're gonna dive in a little bit more to the origin, but like I've I've been in LA under this year, 17 years. One of my first jobs when I came out, I was like, I'm acting, I'm doing this, I'm yeah. doing that. And I came out and one of my boys is a line producer. He said, Well, come work on these shows. You'd be a PA. I was driving the cast around for these yeah. reality TV shows. Yeah. Had no idea. I was like, PA? These people were doing this on their summer break from school and college yeah. because their uncle or their dad Someone was somebody on set. And I'm like, wait, this is a job? 
I was getting two hundred and fifty dollars afterwards, like two hundred and twenty dollars a day. You feel me? <laughs> they were feeding me, so yeah. I didn't have to spend my money on food. And I was like, I did not know this was an opportunity to do this. And then you're learning and networking, and that's, that's how it works. That's how you work. That's how you move up. up. So yeah. while you were, you know, when you're on that show, you're probably thrown in the fire, learning everything. What was, you know, what was the connection that made? Was it somebody like you found that was like mentoring you along yeah. the way too? I met a guy. So that. I don't even know if that project, that pilot ever got ever. off the ground. Yes, but yeah. one of the women there, she was this big time um, music video director. Mm -hmm. And uh, she loved me. It's not, at the time, it wasn't that many women yeah. on set either. Um, and she was just this boisterous New York lady. I for, cannot remember her name for the life of me. I'm terrible. I'm working on that, guys. It's important to remember people's <laughs> names. But this was like 20 years ago. But... Um, yeah, she just, and she was just like, come into the office, yeah. come into the office. And let me get you, I'll be honest with you, I did not like being an office PA. Mm -hmm. Did not like that. But I met this, uh, I met this guy, his name was Ryan Abbott. Mm -hmm. And now Ryan is like, I, last time I talked to him, I think he like kind of runs like 495 and a bunch of stuff like that. But he was just like, you know, come, he was like, you need to learn more. He's like, you know, the PA stuff is yeah. cool, you know, but it's inconsistent you know, you got to stay in production. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, I'm trying to get to, like, I'm trying to get to it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So yeah, he, how can he, I get to how it? Do I get, how do I get to it? And so he brought me over to a place. It was a company called Rocket Science. Mm -hmm. And at the time, they were doing all these Fox shows. Yeah. Uh, like, Don't Forget the Lyrics, Trading trading Spouses. It was, yeah. like, really, like, the heart, the height of reality. And then I kind of started off there. He was like, log. So I started off as a logger and I was logging. And then one day I was like, this, I remember, I will say this though, because it was happening so fast. And I remember just being so excited yeah. about just the opportunities to be like working. And I was like, I just cannot wait till I get my thousand, my first thousand dollar check. Mm. That was like something I can show to my dad and right, like right, my right. mom. And like, you know, people like, you yeah. know, this is, this is actually like, doing I bet on myself and right. it's coming. Right. And so he was, I'll never forget one day I was frustrated. I was I was very frustrated with just the the job of logging. Yeah. Right? It didn't feel like a creative thing. Mm -hmm. And at the time I wanted to be a producer and I wanted to do all these like very these very like they seem like these very big jobs, yeah. but I didn't know how to really get into it. And I remember Ryan sitting me down and he says to me, he said, "You know, you should learn a trade, like you should learn a skill in this industry." Mm. And that way no one can ever deny you. Mm -hmm. It's not about your connections or mm -hmm. your relationships to people. It's about your talent. Yeah. And I just sat there and I sat with that for a long time. And then I remember walking into, I remember seeing the edit bays and there was this guy in there and he was the boss at this place. He mm -hmm. just, he walked around with this air of just like, I am running this job. Yeah. And he was the editor. He had the corner office mm -hmm. and all the executives were coming into his office asking him his opinion. I was like, what's that job? <laughs> and, you know, and I was like, okay. And I remember sitting there and watching and watching what he was doing. And I was yeah. like, oh, he's he's actually creating, he's making this show, mm -hmm. especially in reality at that time. Mm -hmm. No one really knew what it was. Right. And I was like, this man is making this show. And I was like, I want to do that. And everything after that was me learning how to be the best editor that I could possibly be. That is a fire story. Yeah. That's a fire. And that and that's real because I think we had an interview before and I was asking somebody about what stood out to them and they were like, there's so much control mm, yes. in an editor's hand. You have all the footage and all the power to put together something and craft a story yeah. and then go back. Obviously there's a lot of long hours, a lot of work. Yeah. But what you just said in terms of like identifying something that sticks and getting great at that skill and then just seeing that and observing. I think it's it's reflective of who you are because you just talked about like getting off. Hey, what you guys doing? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be on. Okay, who's that? What's he doing? Good. Learning. Asking I, questions. Yeah. Always learning. Always. And the thing is, if you love it, because I love it. And even sometimes now when we get into very stressful environments in yeah. the office, I remind my, my, my friends and the people that we work with, guys, we make TV. Yeah. Like we have... An amazing job. Yeah. Like we are, 
giving so much joy and entertainment. And I loved it. I love what like, I, I, yeah. I, I get fired up about it. Like I actually love what I do. Like I'm doing my childhood dream. So yeah, like, but you always have to kind of ask questions. You can't be afraid of what you don't know. Yeah. Cause there's things now, like I'm sitting in offices now and I'm like, what does this word mean? Like, what are they talking about? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what yeah. are they talking about? You have to constantly keep, you know, educating yourself and pushing yourself. No, I, lo- I love that. And that's, that's just, it's just like, you get to make TV. You're doing yeah. your childhood job. What would you say is, is something that like, you already tapped on a couple of things. I was going to ask about yeah. just like advice for newbies getting into it or yeah. just the building a team. Can you talk about that aspect of like working with a team yeah. and then working on your own? Like you work as assistant, a logger, an editor, like, can you yeah. talk about like the of different course. skill sets that are, are needed in this, this things that you're doing? I mean, one of the biggest things advice wise I can give that I try to live by that was given and passed on to me is like always try to work, mm. right? It may not be the thing you want to do. It may not be the job title that you want, but keep working. If it's just a side project, if it's your project, if it's, you know, like I, I think that's something like I'm always trying to do because it's going to break. Yeah, It's going to come. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it will come. If you keep putting yourself in the rooms yeah. and you keep working when people are asking about you and thinking about you, they're like, oh, yeah, you grind it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's one important advice. Another one that I'm, you know, for example, like I remember when I was coming up, I felt like the only. So mm-hmm. much so I used to call myself the black unicorn. Yeah. Right, like yeah. I coined myself. I met this. Yeah. I met this guy. He was like, you know, when you start your business, just name it the wildest thing ever. You know, he's like a lot of people when they get the S corps and the LLCs, they yeah. just kind of like stick to their name. He yeah. was like, just go for it. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna name Black Unicorn. So the name of my like production comes. I felt yeah. like that. I felt like coming up. I wouldn't say this now because it's not like this now. Right. It's changed tremendously in, in a positive way. But at the time growing up, I remember being in these these jobs. And I probably was the diversity hire. You know what I mean? Like I was the only black Facts. woman, the black person there. It was a lot of responsibility yeah. to kind of like speak for the race. For the, yeah, <laughs> and and like, and like, hey, what do we, hey, Larry, what do and you I'm think about I'm glad I was this? there because some of the shit that I was seeing was not kosher. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad somebody was in the room. And then you were the one too. You're not gonna let and it I'm fly. And I'm not, you sure. know. And I think, and I think over time, my confidence to be myself in those spaces because I will say, you know, coming from all black environments, I grew up in black neighborhoods, black high school, black middle school, black college. Mm -hmm. And I got to an industry that is not all black. Mm -hmm. So there was a learning curve Mm -hmm. for me. What what was, what we, can you talk about a little bit like that? Like, what is that? Relatability. Yeah. Comfort. Mm -hmm. Ease. Yeah, I know what you mean. But you know yeah, what I'm saying? For sure, like, yeah. just like, can I say the thing? Does anyone want me to say the thing? I mm-hmm. felt like I was walking on eggshells for a lot of time. A lot of time in my earlier career, especially in that that move up. Yeah. That move, jumping from logger yeah, to yeah. You don't want to like rough on anything. Yeah. Like, you just what? like you know you're trying to navigate the spaces. Who do I trust? Mm-hmm. Who can I trust? You know. Yeah. Um, but so like now I would say it, the industry has changed because there's so many. Black editors, black producers, it's different. Yeah. And so I say lean into that. Like now I would say, I would say lean into that. Like it's less about working, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's less about working at these big cable companies and not networks because those things have changed. It's it's much different. Work with your friends. Yeah. Work with people that you care about because it makes the job so much funner yeah. in my opinion like anytime I can work with someone that I know I'm like yes yeah I agree this is what it's all about We, I used to grow up when you were watching these shows and you see Matt Damon and, and, and Ben Affleck they're doing this all the time all Jack the time. Black all these bro- and you're like man these cats are doing this all the time even when you see Spike Denzel Leonardo DiCaprio Marcia, yeah. say, the list goes down they're talented obviously they're not just putting people on they're qualified but they enjoy working with each other and they get it done and when I think they done. also challenge each other too yes. to go next level each project yes you're and you make something personal you. yeah you make something really personal so I think that's I think I think those are two advices that I would give is like Issa said it best mm-hmm. working across yeah 
you know, a lot of the times we try to, because we have perfectionism, you know, and mm -hmm. imposter syndrome, we want to work with these, yeah. work across. No, for sure. So there's some people that I've, I've met when I first got out here, they're from LA, whatnot. We were all working together, doing things. Some of them are running executives, head of yeah. TV programs, head of this. Yeah. I'm getting calls for things. They're like, yeah, you, Dave, you're an actor, but you've always had a producer mindset. Somebody that sees that in you. And then I've been producing and working with some people on the side and producing projects and one of my friends, you know, we were going through this strike mm -hmm. and I was talking to my sister back home and she was just like, you know, you you are successful. You know, I know you haven't had the booking just yet of this and that. She said, but when you moved to LA, I don't remember you talking about you were going to be producing projects. You got a whole production company. You're doing this podcast. <laughs> yes. You're doing this. You got sponsored. Yeah. She said, and you know, so when you take a step back. And look at it. And you look, you're like, oh, we are. And then who's around you? I always say too, like, who's who's around me, but who's coming? Yeah. So we're trying to pour into the the people that are, you know, you're 22, 20. Yeah, I'd like to say I'm 22. Watching. I'm not. I'm not anymore. Yeah. So you tell me what the sauce is. Please let me know what's happening. I, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I I'm, like, no, I'm, so, I'm, so, you know, I'm like, talking to the 22 oh, year olds. Okay. I'm like, hey, I, oh, I, yes. I, I still feel great. I feel young, yeah. but it's like, what's up? Can you talk about that too, though? Like with mentorship and, yeah. you know, how, like, even what you're learning, how you're, Putting yourself in positions to give back and share Absolutely. with people. Absolutely, and I was gonna say well. you are you also are an example of what I just said. You have to keep working, keep yeah. your hands in all kind of pots because you never know. You just never. don't get me wrong. Like you don't, you want to concentrate. Yeah. On a skill. No, for sure. Because I look at editing like shooting in the gym. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm. You want to concentrate on the thing, but it's also just oh, like when I'm not working on someone else's project. I'm mm -hmm. trying to work on my project. But um as far as mentorship, like, you know, that's a really it's a really interesting question. Because it's like I and this is about to get introspective yeah, yeah, a little yeah. deep. Okay. That's so all right. <laughs> I I still feel like I have so much to learn. Facts. I'm not sure if I'm if I feel confident yet to like, and that's very personal, but like to be the mentor. But don't get me wrong, when I'm in spaces where I mm -hmm. can help. I have this this guy that I'm working with right now, and I will fight a bear for him. Mm -hmm. I'll fight a bear. Like I I think he is exceptional. Yeah. You know, and he reminds me of like when I first came up. Yeah. And I got bit. I had to bite my I had to cut my teeth in the industry, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like I don't want those things to happen to him. No, that's real. You know, and I just so like the conversations that we have on the side, I mm -hmm. I know that's mentorship. Yeah, that I is know, real. No, yeah. that is mentorship. Yeah. Even the advice you're sharing is mentorship. You know, we have people that are like, oh, no, I work with this group or anything. But even what you're saying, it's like, okay, if it's one, because I think, too, I'm I'm doing better of having a big heart, but don't do too much. My mm -hmm. brother my brother always say, don't boil the ocean. You feel mm, me? So it's good, like it you out here trying to help everybody. Like, well, you're still helping yourself. Right. And get, who's get, helping the helper? You, you know, thank you. Like, <laughs> right. you're strong. Who's strong for the strong yes. person? So it's like, you got to be wise about your time because, you know, we when we are filming this right now, it's almost July. Look, you know, when this episode drops, it may be a month from now, two months from now. Yeah. And it's like the year is flying by like that. We don't necessarily have all the time, all the time in the world, to do for sure. every single thing. Yeah. And so you, people respect it, but it's just communication. You can't do it all. You can't. You can't do it all. I, I still... I, you know, I think my career changed and I think mentorship is important Yeah. because I think my career changed once I started saying, I need a mentor. Mm. Like where, where, where are they? Mm -hmm. You know, because when I first got out here, I didn't know anything about the union. Yeah. I didn't know anything about ACE. I didn't know anything about these Come programs. On. You know what I'm saying? I just was like grinding, mm -hmm. you know, and just hustling, trying to find my next job, trying to meet, you know, meet people who knew people and yeah. and it worked. I was don't get me wrong, I was I was doing it, I was doing it. Yeah. But it wasn't until like was you know you get tired of doing it all on your own. And I was like, where are the mentors? Yeah, <laughs> like, you need some help. Yeah. Pass it, pass it, because you know, there is this and it's not just in editing, it's just in this industry. There's gatekeeping mm -hmm. that happens, you know. And there's job insecurity that happens. So much, so much. People don't want to pass on. Well, because it's it's like it's when you you can't help but shine. Yeah. Just you. Oh, thank I, if you. I didn't even oh, know you, you, you know what I mean? Like, and somebody said that even you know to me in certain ways. They're like, you show up to a job, and it's like you just work, just how you walk, how you move. You're gonna stand out. People yeah. are gonna look. So sometimes people see that and may be intimidated right. by that, yeah. or just they look at their own 
and scared. And you're not even worried about that. No. You're just doing what you do. I feel like there's enough for everybody. Yeah, exactly. There yes. is. But that's what you mean with a gatekeeper. And I think sometimes when you get on the other side of some opportunities, you do see it. Absolutely. And it, it works. Not Gatekeeping is never great. But sometimes it works where it's like, oh, I know you. and you, But you're on that side. You're like, okay, I'm, I got in because you know me. But I'm going to help other body. I ain't going to keep it from everybody. I think it's important. I we do, have to. I, you have to. You have to kind of give back. Yeah. You know, you can't do all the jobs. Yeah. <laughs> you no. know what I mean? Like that's an, And that's another thing too. You know, it's just like give. You have to. You have to give back. I'm super thankful for the people that I've met. Yeah. You know, I've been working with Stephanie for yeah. quite some time and she's a genius. I I don't even know if people really No, we love Stephanie. Understand. She's been a supporter since she day one. She kind of blows my mind. Like, no, she's I, she's incredible. <laughs> she blows my mind. Like, I I I you know, I've been assisting her. Yeah. And uh you know, we we kind of come from I do both right mm-hmm. so like I've started my career in unscripted but I'm moving into the scripted yeah. realm I like doing both TV film yeah I like doing both I like music videos mm-hmm. I do I do art visuals for yeah. museums and stuff page, like that like, if you don't follow follow Liz yes, you'll see I just am a, very a wide Ramsey. I like to yeah. do a lot of things I like to have range. I'm interested in a lot of things but you know she also comes Stephanie Philo she comes from unscripted so mm-hmm. when I'm watching her in these scripted rooms. And problems come up, yeah. Whether they be in the writing or in the dailies, yeah. The solutions, like, is that so? That is that's fascinating. That that is, I actually so that's what I'm saying. So I I enjoy I that's where mentorship comes from, right? Yeah. Like sitting in those spaces with those people because how I would have handled that is differently than how you would have cut that situation, right. how you would have cut that scene. Right. And so I just find it like, you know, she's a really brilliant person to to watch that's and really, learn from, for That's sure. really cool. And that's that's like the peers. You know, you're she learning. Is. You're like, okay, yeah, I'm learning from you and you were working together, but man, yeah. I'm talented. I'm doing what I do. Yeah. But how did you do? Okay, cool. This is just pre- yeah. presenting different ways to think about it. Now, you said you can't do it all, but we look at your credits. <laughs> It seems like you do it all. No, nah, for sure. Even, yeah. even, even, you know, jumping from the unscripted and the scripted and then, you know, back in the unscripted and there's a little thing that you might have just been awarded recently. Yeah. Yeah. A little, a little, not, a little Emmy. Um, oh, we're, Emmy. We're, we're sitting with an Emmy winner right now, if y'all didn't know this. You know what I mean? Like, come on, come on, get that around applause, hit the yeah. orange, you know, air horns. Yeah, you feel me? Come on. Can, can you talk about like, Obviously, you worked on Dahmer. You worked on Black Lady Sketch Show. Yeah. This show was Swiss. You know, Houston, yeah. Cars. Atlanta. How did, yeah. Onyx, Onyx it, Collective. Atlanta, like, how did you, yeah, Onyx. And we we love Onyx Collective yeah, we as do. well. So, like, what they're doing. How they're did doing you even get, stuff. like, on that project? And what intrigued you about it yourself? I, I kind of, knowing you and hearing you talk, I got an idea. But can you tell I us a little like- bit? Working on things that are black. Come okay? on. Okay, so let's yeah. just put that. Let's just put that out there. Like <laughs> I like doing other things. Don't get me wrong. My resume has other things Everything, on there, but like, for sure. you know, I I want to make things that people I know watch. Yeah. That that I love. I love walking past someone or just hearing my friends talk about a, a show and mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. What I want to do those things. That's yeah. cool to me. Yeah. Right, those are the cool shows to me. Yeah. So I have been with Fifty One Minds for quite some time. Okay. Yeah. Like I, like I said, I cut my teeth there from Flavor of Love to all those shows. Okay. Like yeah. I feel like I was partic- I have been a part of a television icon, Tiffany, for forever. Yeah. Okay. So, but relationships, right? That's kind of how I got That's on right. Drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, working there, back and forth from Below Deck mm-hmm. to all their shows. I've touched in some kind of way. And then they hit me up about Drive and Swiss Beats and just creating it. Yeah. Like, and a lot of the times people hire me first season shows. That's like my thing. A okay. first season show, giving it its style, yeah. giving it its look. That foundation, the, set the, it up. the sonic, the music. Mm-hmm. That's you. I'm my, that's my bag. Yeah. Let, let, leave me alone. You know, yeah. give me, especially with this working from home now, like I can kind of sit with it. Mm-hmm. I can think and I can just kind of like throw all these things on the cut and I'm just, if I need to bring it, pull it back. But let yeah. me, let me kind of figure out what it is and then we'll go from there. So that's kind of how I got on that. And it was like every first season show, they're hard, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. they're hard, but Swiss is magnetic 
And it's really a beautiful show about him mm-hmm. and his son and car culture yeah. around the world. And it is beautiful. And it's, you know, you never know which, you never know the shows that are going to that, do the, the thing. thing. You don't, you're like, you get on it and you, you know, I was going to ask that too, because that's a question. Sometimes you get, like, you read a script as an actor, yeah. you write, you read something and you, as a director, you're like, oh, I want that. You see this, you're like, oh, this, you're not thinking a war no. from the first time never. you're like building it, right? <laughs> you're never thinking a war. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're just getting into it. You're like, okay, yeah. getting into it. And then it comes from you that. You want to make something beautiful. That's kind of what I tell myself. When I did that and I did Sweet Life. Yeah. Same situation. Love Sweet Life. Yeah. Season one. And I mm-hmm. kind of like, and Sweet Life was like, for me, an ode to LA because yeah. I'm from LA. Exactly. So East like, and, yeah. and that team was LA. So it was just like, mm-hmm. I want to make something for my city. I love for it. people who are from this city. And it was. And it felt like that. It sounded like that. Mm-hmm. And so like I like to I try to make something beautiful. Yeah. That's usually what I go into it thinking about. Yeah. And then story is always like the next thing shaping it. Well, d- jumping into that cuz we obviously we're talking about the Emmy, but you say something making something beautiful, you want to make it. I want to jump back to Dahmer mm. for a second because yeah. that's a real story. It That's is. a tough story. It is. And so can you talk about like the things you had to do mentally to prepare yourself to get into that? Because that's a lot, you know, even actors have to shake it off a little bit, you know. What is that like sitting in that for sure. so long and so much in the research and just the building Dahmer to do that? was, you know, we a step, so I'll say this, you know, crime drama mm-hmm. is my bag. Yeah. You know, I and you know anybody who's ever talked to me about movies and films, yeah. horror, yeah, is my like, come on, my thing. Oh, it's my first. Talk. It's like Let's my baby. It. It's yeah. actually my baby. So you know, when me and Steph first got on, we weren't quite sure what it was going to be. Mm-hmm. It wasn't going to be a horror, right? You know, and I was excited about it. Yeah, to be Just honest with you, I, be honest with you, I was excited about it. And then you know, you start getting the dailies, and you're like, okay, this is this is. This is dark because of the content, but it's really trying to give a different take on a story that has been told a mm-hmm. hundred times. Right. And this concept, you know, Nisi Nash did a beautiful yeah, job of just amazing. kind of portraying the community and the victims of this monster. Yeah. And so we sat with those dailies for 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 weeks and just checking in with each other yeah. and just making sure that we are okay with where we are what kind of story are we telling mm-hmm. you know sensitive trying to be very sensitive yeah, that's real. to the family that's what I was gonna say it's yes. real lives real there's real lives yeah. there's really there's really people who are impacted by that story mm-hmm. and you know I was really proud we 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 were lucky with the episodes that we got you know we got. Episode four, which is called The Good Box, mm-hmm. which is a dark episode. He, you know, he is, I don't want to spoil. No, no, for sure. For those you know, I don't want to spoil it. I want people to still watch it. It's still on Netflix. Right. So you know, go watch that. Yeah, please. But like, <laughs> but like you know, The Good Box is a yeah. story about him and his past. And that could be, you know, some people are like, why do we care about his past? Right. You know? Yeah. But you kind of need to know a person's past to really understand how dark and how far they come. Mm-hmm. Right. And then our episode eight, which was really, I think episode eight was harder to to cut just as a black person because episode eight was the trial and it was word for word. And yeah. we, I get goosebumps just thinking about you see it. The, you see when it was coming out and the, 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 the side by screens, side split yes. screen of how it was. Yes. And powerful. we even just in the, when she's so talented, just editing that and just trying to keep that yeah. as authentic as, you know, we possibly could. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I, she likes to talk about the sound work that I did on that. So I'll, you know, I, Really got into doing the sound design for yeah. that show because again I am into horror. Yeah. So like I wanted it to feel creepy. It needed to feel scary. He it, even though he's a good looking cat, like yeah. casted a very good looking person, he is dangerous. Right. You know what I mean? Like he's for a sure. dangerous, dangerous person. And like I mean, I was in the house doing folly. You know, it was a good time. So Dahmer was Dahmer was great. I've been really lucky. I think nah, I've been really blessed. You, you've and been lucky. blessed, yeah. No, it's and it's, the Emmy was a dream come true. I mean, and it's it's worth it. And but we're seeing there, sitting there from afar and watching, and just like it uh, for me, I think it's it's fire. Like to be able to do these interviews 
and yeah. wa- I'm watching shows and movies from a different lens now. Yeah. You know what I mean? You like, know the people behind it. I know it, the people yeah. behind it. I'm hearing the story and I'm I'm sitting there and I'm just like, yo, I wonder how they, yo, our people cut that. And, you know, yeah. my, my girl probably is like hearing me say that all the time. She's like, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm like, no, no, my people, cool. my people, but it's fire. I love seeing people's I think names and credits when yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Sorry, I can't know about girl, <laughs> nah, but I'm excited. I'm, I don't we, know. I'm a, I'm a fan. Black. I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm a fan of what we do. Come you on, know, I'm talk a fan of all the people you have had sit in this seat. Yeah. I don't even. I'm some. Maybe I have some imposter syndrome because nah. when I even sitting here, I'm just like, what is happening? No. You know, like. But are we trying. To, we're recognizing people because again, cool. I speak to my brother. You know, it's like. People, he worked and he was like, I don't see anybody that looks like me. Yeah. And why is that? And so we want to highlight that. And I remember he used to tell me all the time, he's like, he's doing sound mixing and all that. He was like, look, come to the sound stage with me, do this. I'll come see every movie you're in, but if it doesn't sound good, I'm not doing it. And this is all the yeah. people that make you guys look good. You know, yeah. he was putting me has on to game. Change. You gotta, you know, you have to, it, you have changing. to be open to it. Yeah. Now, and speaking of that, because we're not gonna keep you all day, but you talk to the industry, uh, speak to the like the level of the industry right now strike some people have been out of work yeah. for so long what do you see it as right now where do you see it going i mean that's a that's a very loaded question yeah um it's heavy i will say that it is beautiful just to tag back a little bit of that question yeah. it's beautiful to see so many people of color yeah working and working alongside each other i think Helping a black lady out. sketch yeah. show was probably my first experience on like a majority black project fire yeah I love that show, by the way. Yeah. Mad no, I love it too. Every, I'm mad everybody, at that. What's yeah. going on with HBO? Why are they getting rid of all the? Why are they getting rid of all the? Anyway, that's Every, the hit on there. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question about the strike, you know, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Mm-hmm. I'm an optimistic person. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm hoping because I'm not. I know a lot of people. So I'm going to speak from both both mm-hmm. ends, from right. unscripted and scripted, right? And unscripted, a lot of the conversation and the discourse was, you know, the strike. Is gonna be the new boom, you know, because that's kind of when I came into LA, it was a, a strike that had happened yeah. and yeah. launched a career for many people. I don't even know if I would have been in this industry if not for reality television, because I think reality television was a disruptor. Mm-hmm. I think now streaming and TikTok and you know YouTube is the disruptor, yeah. right? People are learning how to cut with cap cut. Yeah, you know, so like our jobs are changing. Right. And we have to be a little bit more malleable with what it is to work. What are what is it now? Because like I know five years ago when someone would ask me to cut something for YouTube, I would be like, You're crazy. But now now you ask me to cut something from YouTube. I'm like, I'm thinking of I know how many people watch YouTube shows. Come on. I know how many people are on TikTok. People just watch YouTube all the time. All day. That's all they do. People, so it's like more people might watch that YouTube pod right. that I just cut. Than this TV show that I'm doing. Right. So, in the unscripted world, when the strike happened, people thought there would be more work, but there wasn't. Yeah. It didn't. It didn't bounce because of the streamers mm-hmm. and you know cable networks aren't like where they used to be. No, They're all kind of monopolized and mm-hmm. ate each other up, you know. And yeah. they're producing very few. They're producing less. Le- much less. I do think that in scripted. The projects are still coming. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was fortunate enough to kind of keep working through the, I, I was down for a few months, but I was able to kind of like, we you know, work around. A lot of the projects were already filmed. Yeah. So, you know, it was finishing things. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where it was for me. It's like, these things need to get finished. But um, I'm optimistic. I'm hoping with the next year, yeah. I think 2024 is a wrap. <laughs> Yeah, I no, think, you yeah, know, I no, think 2024 I'm is a wrap. I think so. I'm looking forward to 2025 and hoping that you know things get greenlit. Production companies yeah. kind of, but everything is tighter. Budgets are tighter. It's much tighter. No rates are tighter. I think I agree with you. I think it's coming. But I my my message to even our team when we build and everything is like, hey, let's get as organized as possible for the wave that I believe is coming back. Yes. Um, and when it does come, we don't have, like, I always say, when it's time to go, it ain't time to get ready. Yeah. So. Stay ready. They, you know, call call me. All right, let's go. But all this time that we've had, why haven't we put ourselves in a position to answer the call, or at least have yeah. things presented? So I agree with you. And I hope in the strike, 
And in the pandemic too, both mm-hmm. those things, that downtime, because a lot of the times we are so go, 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 go. Yeah. I hope that a lot of people in that downtime found their other creative outlets. I, yeah. I write. I'm working yeah. on the script. I got a horror I got a horror idea Come and a on, horror script talk. in my back. You know, so there's things that you can be doing in this in that process, you know. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do hope that things get, uh, you know, better it's, for it's sure. It's gonna come better. Yeah. What, what what can we keep an eye out for for you uh, in the in the coming yeah. months? You know, yeah. What can people stay? Tapped I've been into? I've been cooking, yeah. cooking up some stuff. Okay. Um, with Disney, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So I'm I'm happy to be over there. Where you know the, the mouse, <laughs> yeah. the house that the mouse built, <laughs> he's and you, it's full circle. He's treating you right. I wanted to be a mouseketeer. Come on, see, we Every started day I that. Every I walk over there, I be like, I wanted to be a mouseketeer, and here I am at Look. the house that. The mouse built. And we started the interview talking about that. And you're going to wrap it I'm up like that? I'm telling you, it's a manifestation. That's how you're doing it. It's a full circle. So, though, I'm I'm doing more with, with putting myself out there. Not yeah. being afraid of mm-hmm. whatever is supposed to come my way. Yeah. You know, I think I th- I'm thankful for all the relationships that I've, that I've met in my journey. Yeah. You know, I'm writing that is something that I think that's the next thing that I, I kind of want to real I want to I want to manifest the dreams that I have. Yeah. You know, the dreams when you when you wake up from and you lean over the bed and you write them down, mm-hmm. those dreams. That like dream. those things yeah. need to come to the world. Yeah. Especially because we keep remaking out all the same movies. I'm like, yeah. oh, they just need some more. Oh, you need more ideas? We got I got you. We got I got you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, again, more work with people. That I like, yeah. Making new relationships. I want to cut award shows. I want to cut a feature. Come on. You know, I always dreamed of the Emmy, and then when I won the Emmy, I was like, Oscar. Yes. Oscar? I never thought about it. I was like, I, you know, I was a TV girl, but I was like, you know, maybe I'm not dreaming big enough. Now, you know, maybe I need to hey, dream bigger. It's, it's possible. It's possible. You know? We sitting in the studio right now. This was an idea in my brother's apartment in Burbank in 2008. Period. And you feel me? And we like Dolby and Avid sponsored this. Who would who would have thought? And speaking of Dolby, you know? one thing I wanted to also I want yeah. to go to that. And I want to when you talk about where we are in yeah. the the landscape, I think it's important for editors to know multiple platforms. Mm-hmm. We're in that. If you don't, should because we are in that we're in that span now where Adobe and Premiere is kind of like. Competing, mm-hmm. and there's jobs that are like premiere based, yeah. and most people, a lot of the people in my industry are avid based, yeah. And so I think it's good. I, that's another both. tidbit of advice. I think it's good to just have all of them in your repertoire. Look, I'm I'm primarily an actor and voiceovers. I've I've been editing and using things and and using my skill set and trying to learn what I can. Absolutely, because you just never know. So never I, know. I agree. And yeah. every door, we're not closing. Learn anything. all the things. Yeah, nerd out. Come on. Just nerd out on it. I sit home and just watch YouTube videos on like the latest yeah, have Boris to. effect. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where, where can people find you? Are you on, you know, so, X, Instagram, no, all the things? No, okay. I like to keep a little mystery. Low profile, I'm from, for I'm sure. from that era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can, Instagram is okay. I am Lyric yeah. LA. And um, every my website yeah. www.lyricramsey.com. Okay. All that other stuff you gotta you gotta search for that. You gotta search. <laughs> you gotta you gotta find it. You me. know what I'm saying? Any and the fashion tips. You know what I mean? DM on on the low or just like tap in. Like what what, what can people learn about that? Because I'm telling you, this this I fit. We know we gonna have people say something. I think fashion is personal. Yeah. I love it. It's the thing that I love to do. It's the thing I don't even think about it. I dream about it. Yeah, it comes to my mind. But I love helping people. Come on. It might be a second. If this other stuff don't work out, that might be, it might be, it I had might to be ask. in my my bag when I retire. Because yeah. it's like I genuinely love when, like, for example, when Steph was going to the Emmys, mm-hmm. I was like, girl, just at any point, I will stop and I for free. Just like I hey. just in love. I love it. So love yes, it. if you want fashion advice, hey. I got you. Hosting black might have to holler at you. You, you feel know, me? You know, I enjoy it. Yeah. I have friends. All my friends are pretty yeah. well tapped in. So come on. Let me know. We will.
We will. We'll this look. was fun. This was a fun. This was fun. Yeah, we we just fun. thank you so much yeah, for being here. Cool. Appreciate you all the information you share, just the love and your energy. It's not it's not a surprise why you're doing what you do. Yeah, thank so we're you. glad to have you. And thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Posting Black. Be sure to follow us, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, everything. Uh please. Thank Dolby Institute for supporting us. Thank Avid for your support as well. We couldn't do without you. And we'll see you next time on Posting Black. Stay black. Peace.